distinguished guests, racers, the girls behind the helmet, and the GRID network, welcome you to the premiere of GRID Girls, the women racing to win. Tatiana Calderon made her Super Formula debut. We'll tell you all about her first race over in Japan. Jennifer Jo Cobb and Natalie Decker both race at Gateway. We'll recap the NASCAR race weekend. And Circus Paul Ricard had a lot of activities. We'll tell you about all the women that raced there. Welcome to Grid Girl. Hello, everyone. Joe Samniak here, along with Kobe Lambis from the Podium Finish. Welcome to the premiere episode of Grid Girls, the girls behind the helmet. Very excited to have you join us, and we're very excited to do this in part with racers, the girls behind the helmet. I know Kobe, very exciting day. How's everything going for you so far? Oh, every, everything's going well, you know, just that just afternoon, Eastern time on the East Coast, just getting my day started. And and I always I use I'm not really a morning person. I always have trouble getting up. So no no better way to get my, my day going, you know, than being out here on broadcast with the great network, as always. Yeah, very excited to have you here. I know we're definitely looking forward to expanding this program as well, too. We're going to be looking at more future hosts as well for this program. Especially, we want to hear from everyone that's watching us for the first time. Participate in this chat room. We'll love to hear your questions, see what comments you may have on some of the stories. And we're going to start with some developing news that broke out today. Yeah, big news coming out of Formula One world. You know, the Williams Formula One team will see the family step down after the upcoming Italian Grand Prix. The team was sold to a U.S. investment group called Doralton's. And, and Doralton's actually encouraged Claire Williams and the rest of the Williams family to stay involved. But the family decided that it's an appropriate time to step away from this, from the team. And, you know, to see Doralton's lead the team, you know, with you know with with the name with the williams name is you know we're gonna be really crazy remember we saw the sauber name go away and become alpha romeo racing and it's gonna be really interesting to see what's gonna happen with williams you know what one of one of the sports you know most historic teams for many years and joe a lot of praise and thank you messages have been expressed to claire williams today especially as being the only female f1 team boss how does her accomplishment further the advancement of women in managers positions in motorsports and sports in general it's very significant and definitely I think it's going to be viewed as, as a very positive step for women to lead teams. I know when it comes to, especially in the United States, a lot of the professional teams, in the major leagues, we don't see a whole lot of women when it comes to some of the ownership roles, other big roles in sports. And of course, when it comes to motorsports, a lot of times we've seen a lot of people associate motorsports as a masculine sport. That's not the case, though, with motorsports. Any person could, you know, organize a real run team organization and compete at the top level. And I think with Claire Williams, what they've done, keeping the women's name running, it's been a struggle the last couple of years. That's no doubt. But definitely they've introduced drivers that we were talking about today. They've been racing and they got such a long legacy. And just somewhere in especially auto racing, we do see where teams come and go. We see that all across motorsports. It's sad to see Williams go, but definitely I think Claire, Frank, everybody has a lot to be look upon in a positive light. And especially everything Claire has done, I think that could really motivate more women to enter sports, especially motorsports, in a managerial role. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you said right there. Claire Williams deserves a lot of credit for for working so hard and being extremely successful you know in a male dominated environment and i believe that claire williams being as successful as she's been you know despite you mentioned they haven't really had the results in recent years but 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 claire but claire williams you know still she she held she held quite a challenging position you know not you know, for anyone, and and Claire Williams was able to. Yes, she yes, found found some success, and also things haven't been great in recent years. But that doesn't take away from all of her hard work over at at Williams, and and and, and certainly it's going to be interesting to see what the future of Williams looks like. And 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 that's switching gears over to Super Formula. We're we're going to discuss Tatiana Calderon, who made her debut. And as we talk about each driver, we're going to display their Twitter or Instagram usernames. So you can follow each racer throughout the season on social media. Yeah, and Tatiana Calderon, who made her Super Formula debut over in Japan at Twin Ring Motegi, 
You know, Tatiana is from Bogota, Colombia, but she currently resides in Spain. And she's the first woman to compete in Super Formula since 1997. And Joe, for Tatiana Calderon, you know, coming from Formula 2 last year and now to Super Formula cars, what are some of the big differences that she's going to see throughout the season? Well, definitely some of the big differences I think she'll see is how Super Formula, when it comes to the Super Formula name and the reputation globally, it has a big following. So Formula 2 does have a good size following. They are the feeder system a lot of drivers use to get into Formula 1. Still, it seems like where, you know, with Formula 2, they have the two races in a weekend, Super Formula 1 race. But the difference is, I think the big thing she'll notice is some of the fan following. I feel when it comes to Super Formula, they got a lot more passionate fan following globally. People are really into that series. And then, of course, recently, too, Super Formula introduced some changes where they eliminated mandatory pit stops. So it's really going to be, I think, a big test when it comes to driving, especially driving where you're not making the pit stops. It's going to sort of come down to tire management. It's going to be really interesting to see how Tatiana handles everything. Yeah, yeah, certainly. She started off her debut in 19th place. That's where she qualified, and then and then the the race the race happened, and it was it was really interesting. You know, some 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 drivers you know dropped d dropped out of the race for various reasons, and and then you know, mentioned on our grit tonight yesterday, but Nick Cassie said that it was a very boring race, very processional. You know, with with the elimination of pit stops, no strategy, but and drivers had to really focus on tire management. And Tatiana Calderon actually ended up finishing twelfth. And and one of the biggest things I like to note from her Super Formula debut, she held off Naoki Yamamoto, who's one of the best drivers in Japan. Yeah, it was it was just you know really, you know, awesome for Tatiana to be able to hold off such a talented driver like Naoki Yamamoto. And, and I remember last year with Alpha Tari. Naoki Yamamoto got to drive in the drive in a free practice session at the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. Yeah, for yeah for the Alphatari, you know, and and he and he and he's certainly you know such a talented driver. And Tatiana been able to hold off a, Naoki Yamamoto with all the with all of the you know accomplishments on his on his resume. It was it was it was certainly a, I felt like that was a big win for Tatiana early on in her young Super Formula career. And the next Super Formula race is gonna. Is gonna is gonna take place on the weekend of September 26 and 27 when when the series heads to Okayama International Circuit. And you know, with Tatiana coming home in 12th, what challenges is she gonna face as a rookie throughout the season? The big challenge, I think, is gonna be consistency, trying to be up there scoring points. Of course, with the changes, as you mentioned, some drivers are not a huge fan of it. Others, they have talked about this is really gonna put in the hands of the drivers. So it's really going to display, you know, when it comes to the driver's skills, race after race, being consistent in taking care of the car, moving forward, making the car better, too. It's going to be really interesting. I think that's going to be one of the big challenges any rookie would face is pulling off consistently good runs. And I know a lot of folks are going to be watching. Tatiana, she had tested Formula One with Alfa Romeo. Definitely, I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on her and seeing how she could handle the formula two season yeah definitely I, I feel i feel like that it might be a little more challenging for tati for, for tatiana as a rookie this season you know with, with the with the elimination of pit stops you know that there's not going to be any strategy or many opportunities to try to move your way through the field by using the overcut or the undercut whatever strategy the team is using but i feel like you know in formula two tire management is really key over there and i and since tire management is going to be, be key in Super Formula this season with, with the elimination of pit stops, I feel like spending a year in Formula 2 is certainly going to help Tatiana out in that area. Yeah, it's definitely going to help out in that area. It's going to be really interesting to see how all the racing turns out. Now, one of the big things, of course, this past weekend, we had the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoor Truck Series racing, and we had two racers there, Jennifer Joe Cop and Natalie Decker. It was the Car Shield 200 at Worldwide Technology Race Gateway Raceway. Jennifer Joe Cobb, she was running for, in the mid pack area, but then she had a front tire go down on her and she went into the turn two wall. She was done for the day. Natalie Decker, this was her ninth start of the season. She finished 28th to, in the Truck Series race. The next race for the Truck Series is September 6th at Darlington 
This is the first time since 2011 the Truck Series will be racing at Darlington Raceway. They're going to be racing the same day, but before the Southern 500. Jennifer Joe Cobb is on the entry list to race at Darlington. When it comes to Darlington, especially for the Truck Series race, what do you see as going to be a big factor Truck Series drivers, including Jennifer Joe Cobb, will be facing since they haven't been to Darlington since 2011? Oh, yeah, Joe, for any driver, you know, Darlington is what they call a driver's track. They, they, they call it the lady in black. The Dar Darlington is certainly one of the more challenging circuits on, an, on, the, Na on the NASCAR schedule. And I and, and, it, and I think it's going to I think it's certainly going to be a challenge for some of the drivers in the field this weekend as they head as, as they as they head to Darlington. But, you know, J J Jennifer, Jennifer Joe Cobb, she's she's been in the sport for a long time you know, as a as a female team owner. And she deserves a, and she deserves a lot of credit. For being able for you know being able to stick around this long on her team and and just keep grinding in the truck series yeah so jennifer joe kyle's been a been a regular in the truck series for quite a number of years now and natalie decker she's still very young in her career and and certainly this season running with nice motorsports natalie's getting a lot of track time and experience as they try to help her develop her skills yeah natalie very young racer a lot of time for her to hone her skills get better and better with that truck series and keep climbing the ladder. Jennifer Joe Cobb, I know, definitely a lot of credit to her. She's been racing there in a long time, had some good races as well, too. And we're definitely going to be encouraging everyone to follow Natalie Decker, Jennifer Joe Cobb on their social media accounts. One of the big things, of course, with NASCAR, with the truck series, it's almost essentially the third level when it comes to the Cup Series. Then you have the Xfinity Series and then the truck series. So it's definitely going to be really interesting to see how everything turns out. Now, one of the big things, of course, the prior weekend, TCR Europe, they kicked off their season of Paul Ricard, and it was a pretty interesting event. We had two racers there, Jessica Bachman and Michelle Halder. Both of them, of course, racing there for Jessica. It was really exciting to see what she could do this year at TCR. And then for Michelle, her debut, which was pretty successful, she just finished right outside the top 10, had a pretty good race. Jessica, she was running within the top 10, but then a late race incident occurred when another driver had gone off the track, out the groove, and when trying to rejoin, made contact with Jessica. It was a tough break for her to not finish. Here's some audio clips from both Michelle and Jessica from that race weekend. That was, uh, again, a good one. Yeah. I gained some position, and uh, this race was the same than last race, but not so much fight than yesterday, but quite good speed and a lot of fights and a lot of fun, of course, and um, I'm just really happy with the first race weekend here in the TCI Europe. I had a quite good start out on the line, but then into turn three, I got like cars everywhere, and they were like defending, so I lost, lost a good position in the start. But there's nothing wrong with the pace and everything else. But cool is just um, a bit, yeah, angry right now. I don't really know what to say in media, but yeah, I, I was for sure his fault. He just crushed, he just turned into me, and then he just drove straight into my side with purpose for sure. So, so it's a tough break for Jessica, but overall impressive weekend for Michelle. Of course, TCR Europe. They're going to have more races coming up, and we'll definitely be following both racers. But that was the only racing going on at Paul Ricard. Yeah, and also we had Jamie Chadwick, who 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 won the inaugural W Series Championship, competing in Formula Regional, and in three races she scored a tenth place finish, another tenth place finish, and a ninth place finish. And next we have an audio clip from Jamie Chadwick. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I got the position eventually. It was a bit scrappy. Uh, I didn't race very well at all, but uh, yeah, glad I finally got into the points and uh, got that tenth place. Oh. Yeah, not uh, where we wanted to finish, but actually I was quite happy. Um, we made quite a lot of changes overnight to suit me and the car and the track a little bit better. And although I didn't really showcase it in terms of result or pace, I'm actually a lot happier with the way things are feeling. So yeah, I just need to get a bit of a better start, better first lap, and hopefully we can get back up into sort of the top five or six. Yeah, so you heard right there, uh, you know, although Jamie Chatwood finished, uh, scored, you know, two 10th place finishes in a night, you know, still in the top 10, Jamie Chatwood still feels optimistic about her program going on right now in Formula Regional. And right now, Chatwick is currently seventh in the point standings. So it's going to be interesting to see if she can move up some places and, pot and potentially get up there and contend for the championship. And, and next, talking about another racer, Sophia Flores. I'm sure a lot of you 
first heard of Sophia Flores, just like myself, when she was involved in that scary crash at the Macau Grand Prix in 2018. It was a, yeah, the, her horrible crash went viral all over the internet. And still to this very day, I'm still shocked that Sophia Flores was able to walk away from that because when I saw it happening live, I was watching Macau that year. I really feared the worst. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how many people were introduced to her. And and she and that right after that crash, Sophia stated that she wanted to race again. And, and eventually she, she reached that goal. And now she's racing her way on the road to the 24 hours of Le Mans. And Sophia Flores is going to be racing with Richard Mill racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She competed with them at like at the Le Castellet 240 in the European Le Mans series. Yeah, and also racing at Le Castellet was the was the Iron Lynx all female team number 83 consisted of Man Manuela Goster, Michelle Gotten, and Rahel Frey. And in the race, Sophia Flores' team finished 11th place overall and in class in LMP2. Yeah, and then and then the Iron Lynx team finished. 23rd overall and Joe a lot of people are comparing Sophia Flores's path to Jamie Chatwick what similarities do, can you find between the two racers so definitely some of the similarities between the two racers is essentially their climb up as they progress and Jamie Chadwick of course we know doing a lot of the open wheel racing when it comes to Sophia very much the same open wheel race of Formula 3 so definitely the path is very similar of course Sophia she's going more towards the endurance racing side as well. So it's a little bit different, but definitely both racers, very talented, are definitely gaining a lot of traction and a lot of fanfare. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting some following Jamie Chadwick, who's already seen a lot of success, and see if Sophia Flores can find the same amount of success as well. And, yes, we certainly have a lot of upcoming talented female racers out there, and be, and be sure to follow racers, the girls behind the helmet on Twitter, at be Behind the Helmet. Definitely encourage everyone to follow them. They're one of our partners that make this program possible. And some of the upcoming races we do have all over, you can also find on their Twitter account as well. Lena Bowler, she'll be racing in Formula 4 in Italy this upcoming race weekend. Excuse me, in Spain. So that's going to be really exciting. Encourage everyone to follow her. Abby Pullen, of course, the British driver. Very young in age. She'll be racing her Formula 4 debut as well. And then over in Italy, we have Hamda al Kabasi who is going to be racing as well. So she's going to be somebody we're definitely going to be following. Everybody that we're following, as well as the racer behind the, excuse me, racers, the girls behind the helmet, they'll be following as well, providing updates throughout the racing season. So very, very exciting time. And then, of course, some of the upcoming races, Sophia will be racing as well in the Formula 3 final round in Monza and Mugello. That's going to be two really big races. Simona de Silvestro, she's making her one-off debut when it comes to essentially GT World Challenge at Nürburgring. Jennifer Jo Cobb, as we mentioned, she's going to be racing the truck series at Darlington. And then some big news that came out yesterday as well. Vicky Pereira, Marlo Renault, Europe Racing at Nürburgring, she's going to be substituting for another driver that was injured. So it's really exciting to see her again to call to substitute for another driver. I was going to compete, but unable to. Kobe, Vicky ran the W Series. For fans not familiar with how similar the Formula Renault and the W Series are, are, I know a lot of people see the cars as they look the same, but a lot of times they see it as the same when it comes to the two cars. How do you feel Vicky is going to essentially handle the race considering the cars look the same, they almost act the same? as well 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 you know those cars over there you know i i feel like a lot of the cars you know they, they may look the same but they certainly don't handle the same i think you just have to just go out there and, and do the best you can and try to adapt and you know a lot a, you know most drivers when they're coming up through the ranks they 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 have to be they have to be able to adapt to 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 different vehicles and I'm and I'm sure that Vic that Vicky's going to be able to do that because a lot of other drivers are able to succeed as well with that. And I and I and I certainly think that Vi, that 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 Vicky's going to do a fine job. Yeah, I think Vicky will do a pretty good job. Especially a lot of people when it comes to the cars, they have a lot of similarities. They're almost the same, but of course the differences will be the tractor in. It's going to be a very different track, very different atmosphere when it comes to racing around Nürburgring compared to what they've seen 
and the W Series. We encourage everyone, be sure to follow racersbehindthehelmet.com, follow and like their social media account, and definitely subscribe to the Grid Network for more racing programs, including future episodes of Grid Girls, where we're going to have more folks on the air with us. Yeah, and we're very excited to start this new partnership with Racers Be Behind the Helmet, and we're looking forward to reporting on more women r racing all across the globe. And before we go out here, do you have any final words, Joe? I um, definitely just want to thank everyone for watching the first episode. I know we're definitely working with racers, the girls behind me, the helmet, to make this show better and better each and every week. We're definitely going to be reaching out to more folks to work with us on this program, make it better, keep improving it every week. And I think it's going to be really exciting to see the growth of this program. And then just definitely encouraging people to follow all the women out there racing. I know we've been displaying their Twitter handles as well as their Instagram account if they don't have a Twitter Twitter account. And definitely we're going to be just really excited to see the growth of the popularity of women racing. Yes, yes, certainly. Very, very excited to get this program going with Racers Behind the Helmet, focusing on, on female racers all across the all across the globe. And I'm sure all of the female racers, they're going to inspire other young females as well to get involved and get into more sports, see what Claire Williams has done. And then I also forgot to mention when we were talking about Williams, you know, Susie Wolf, who's, curr who's currently one, the team boss over at Adventure, you know, doing incredible things in, over in Formula E. And, and then a lot a lot of others as well, you know, Danica Patrick did a lot for women in racing and, and encouraged encourage them to get involved in motorsports to show them that they can that they can certainly achieve their dreams and anything is possible. Anything is possible. Definitely motorsports is a sport where it doesn't matter who's behind the wheel. If they put in the time and effort to hone their skills, they could win. With Kobe Lambeth at the podium finish, I'm Joe San Diego. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.